Hello everyone, I am Chandramita Das, fourth year student from Lakhimpur College of Veterinary Science. My presentation on infectious bursal disease or IBD, which is one of the most economically important diseases of poultry. Here is the contents of my presentation. Start with introduction, then etiology, then susceptible host, after the transmission, then pathogenesis, after the clinical signs, then lesions, after the diagnosis, then treatment, and lastly but not the least, prevention and control. So let's start with introduction. Synonyms of this disease are gumbor disease, infectious bursitis, infectious avian nephrosis. This disease was first recognized in Gumbur district of USA, so that it also known as Gumbur disease. So what is IBD? It is an acute highly contagious viral disease of young chickens seen worldwide caused by infectious bursal disease virus which targets mainly the bursa of Fabricius. It is characterized by immunosuppression, watery diarrhea, band picking, depression, mortality and it has high morbidity, it may go up to 100% and also immunosuppression which may lead to vaccination failure and the other diseases like E. coli, Marex disease, coccidiosis, etc. Come to next slide, etiology. It is caused by the infectious bursal disease virus is a double-stranded RNA virus which belongs to the genus Avivirina virus under the family Virina viridae. This virus is very stable. It persists in the environment for several weeks and it can survive at pH from 2 to 12. The IBDV has two serotypes, serotype 1 and serotype 2. The serotype 1 strains, they are pathogenic in chickens and serotype 2, they are the infect chicken or turkeys but they do not cause clinical signs or immunosuppression in chickens or turkeys. Then come to susceptible host. The natural host are chickens and turkeys. Young chickens, 3 to 6 weeks of age, they are mostly susceptible due to their mature B lymphocytes or active bursa fibrosis and also their maternal antibody has went. But the adult birds, they are resistant to this disease due to their regressed bursa. Duck, guinea fowl, quail, pheasants are also infected. Then come to transmission through contaminated feed, water, litter. This virus is shed in the feces of infected birds and it can persist in the environment for several weeks as I mentioned in earlier slide and it contaminates the feed, water, litter and poultry shed and it transmits from one place to another place via through the mechanical transmission via human beings, animals or maybe fomites. And the virus may be transmitted through the wild birds because they act as a reservoir. Then come to pathogenesis. Virus enter through the ingestion, then it replicates in gut and associate with the macrophages and lymphoid cells. Then it causes primary viremia through the portal circulation. Then it goes to the bursa fibrosis, which is the target organs of this virus. Then active replication of this virus is take place in bursal follicles and B lymphocyte cells. After that, it goes to the bloodstream and result in secondary viremia. Then it affects the other organs like muscles, kidney and causing clinical disease and it may also cause death within 64 to 72 hours post-infection. Then types of IBD infection. Depending on age, clinic, breed of chicken, the virulence of the virus strains and also maternal immunity of the birds. It divided into two forms, clinical form and subclinical immunosuppressive form. The clinical form 
which are more common and occurs at 3 to 7 weeks of age. But severe infection takes place in leg horn up to 18 weeks of age. Clinical form may be classic or very virulent form. In classic, the mortality is low, it seldom exceeds 3%, but in virulent form, it causes very severe infection and the mortality more than 20%. In subclinical form, it occurs sporadically at uh, less than 3 weeks of age. Chickens are susceptible. And here, no clinical sign, but there is long lasting immunosuppression. So, come to clinical finding. Clinical signs include sudden death, anorexia and depression, tremor, unsteady gait, ruffle feathers, huddling, watery diarrhea, maybe sometimes bloody, then fever, there may be swollen cloaca then urine stain on vent and vent picking vent picking is one of the most important clinical sign then in this picture a depressed bird lying the beak touching the ground then in second picture you can see the diarrhea with urate then come to lesions in subclinical form there is atrophy of bursa and in clinical form, the birds having enlarged hemorrhagic and edematous bursa, followed by atrophy of bursa, 7 to 8 days following infection. There may be gelatinous exuded around the bursa, and swollen kidney with urates, then hemorrhages in skeletal muscle and the junction of the proventriculus and gizzard. We can find enlarged spleen with necrotic foci. There may be enlarged liver and there may be degeneration and necrosis of thymus and bone marrow may also be affected. In post-mortem lesion, this picture you can see the swollen and hemorrhagic bursa of febrisius. Then second picture you can see in this picture the pale swollen kidney with urates deposited in the ureter. Then in third picture, you can see the gelatinous exudate around the bursa with hemorrhages in bursal follicles. Then in this picture, a, you can see the hemorrhages at the junction between proventriculus and gizzard. Then in this picture, B, you can see the hemorrhages on the thigh muscle. Then let's come to diagnosis. Diagnosis is based on history, clinical signs and symptoms and also age of the affected birds. Then necropsy examination, then mentioned in earlier slide, there may be hemorrhages in bursa of fibrosia, then in skeletal muscle, there may be swollen kidney with urate, etc. Then by confirmatory diagnosis through virus isolation and identification. Bursa fibrosis is best source of virus isolation and virus can also be isolated from the embryonated chicken eggs also. You can do serological test like immunofluorescent test, agarzal precipitation test, viral neutralization test and ELISA. You can do molecular test like reverse transcript test PCR. Then differential diagnosis. We should differentiate the disease from the other diseases which have the similar signs and lesions like IBD. There are some disease like uh, coccidiosis. In coccidiosis, there is also sudden death and bloody droppings, but no bursal lesion. In IBD, Edematous and hemorrhagic versa is there, so you can differentiate IBD from the coccidiosis. Then Marek's disease. In Marek's disease, there is also atrophy of bursa, but in Marek's disease, the nerve lesion may most prominent and it 
forms also tumors and infectious bronchitis infectious bronchitis the distinguishable bursal lesions of ibd differentiate the nephrogenic form of infectious bronchitis then mycotoxicosis in mycotoxicosis there is also the atrophial bursa then come to treatment there is no specific treatment as it is a viral disease so we go for supportive therapy so we can we should provide electrolyte therapy to restore the fluid loss or dehydration then we can give multivitamins to boost the immunity of the birds then we can give antibiotics the broad spectrum antibiotics to prevent the secondary bacterial infection then prevention and control by maintaining strict biosecurity then cleaning and disinfection of poultry shed with disinfectants like formalin or by the fumigation we practiced all in out all in all out management then disposing of dead birds by burning all the burial matter then vaccination of flocks and sheep is most important measures to control the ibd so here vaccination schedule for boilers the primary dose is given on 7 day then booster dose is given on 21st day by eye drop or with water for layers the primary dose is given on 14 day then booster dose on 21st day and again we vaccinate at 16 to 20 weeks age by eye drop or with drinking water for breeders the vaccine is given at pre-lay stage and mid-lay stage there are some commercial vaccines available like novelis gumbur d78 sevec ibdl gumbo med vet i job hack gumbur 2 so here are the references thank you thank you very much